Welcome to the Scalpel of Truth, the podcast providing cutting insight on how to rise to the top in the medical aesthetics industry with your host, Lisa Krause, aka the Bitch and Beautician. That's Lisa with an E, which stands for explicit, because in this surgical suite, she won't sugarcoat the truth. And yes, there will be some seriously salty language, not suitable for sensitive souls, children, nor pets. As a business consultant, Lisa shares the knowledge and lessons she's gleaned over 30 years in the industry, time spent working directly with patients, managers, and med spa owners alike. Her practice growth strategies are sharp, her stories and wits sharper, and her panache for bringing the spice, the sharpest. So buckle up, bichachos. Lisa's about to slice and dice another episode of The Scalpel of Truth. What's up, my favorite pachachos? Welcome back to the Scalpel of Truth, where we slice through the bullshit and get straight to the nitty gritty of really running a med spa. I'm your host, Lise, aka The Bitch and Petition, and today we're diving into a topic that every single med spa owner, injector, laser tech, and even front end coordinator has dealt with at some point, and that is manipulative patience. This episode is called Manipulation Nation for a reason. We're talking about those patients those annoying fucks who think they can game our system by demanding freebies, refunds, extra services, or just generally being a pain in the ass and manipulating our staff. Today, we're breaking down the facts and the tactics that these patients use and how to handle them like a pro. There are a few times when firing a patient is going to be your best move. You bet your ass we're going to cover how to do that with class and minimal drama. So let's get into it. Here's the legal part I need to read. This podcast is presented solely for educational entertainment purposes. Guys, I'm just your beauty business bitch. I'm not a licensed therapist or an HR representative, nor am I a lawyer. This platform's used to share my experiences with what's made me a successful service provider, a manager, and a business consultant for those with whom I coach. Got it? Beautiful. First up, we need to define these manipulative patients, okay? These are people who think your med spa is a buffet line of free shit. So they push boundaries, test policies, try and milk you for every extra treatment, refund, comp service that they can get. They might guilt trip your staff. They might use aggressive tactics or act like they're doing you a favor by giving you their business. These patients know exactly what they're doing. They're seasoned pros at finding cracks in the system and exploiting them. And if you don't have strong boundaries in place, they are going to walk all the fuck over you and your team. What does manipulation look like? I'm going to give you a few examples. Our first example is going to be the serial complainer. So we've all had that patient who's never happy. They get a service, say it's amazing. They're super sweet. And then the next like two days later, they're calling demanding a refund or extra treatments because they aren't seeing the results they expected. You need to make sure you've got a rock solid consent form and treatment agreement in place that is going to outline the expected results, potential risks and timelines of results. This is going to save your ass when somebody tries to pull this shit on you. Peeps, I know that sometimes we're really busy in clinic and we forget to have them sign the fucking consent form. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter med spa, derm practice, plastics, it doesn't matter. You need to make sure that you are going over the consent, having them sign it, no matter how busy you are. That is a 100% cover your ass that you've gone over that consent form. So here's something that you could say. Thank you so much for letting us know about your concerns. Uh, We did discuss this during your consult that uh, optimum results are going to be X amount of weeks after getting the treatment done. So since we're still within that window, I'd recommend us waiting a little bit. We do have you booked for your follow-up in a couple weeks. And at that time, we're going to check your progress. This is another reason you are going to be a rebooking rock star, okay? Okay. You are going to rebook your patients always. This is your follow-ups and rebooking is mandatory for everyone because then your patient at least feels like you haven't just, here's the treatment and goodbye, right? So you want to stay calm. You want to stay firm, but you don't want to give into that pressure of a free treatment or a service 
or a refund unless it's warranted. And I don't like a refund. I like an extra service. The only time I'll do a refund is if that person is a fucking psycho and you don't want their money or anything to do with them because they are the biggest red flag. You got to get rid of them. You got to block them and you got to bless them. You got to have a pop up on their chart that they are not welcome back. Here's your money and fucking beat it. But of course, you're going to do that nicely. The next thing we're going to talk about is the freebie seeker because lots of those out there. So when you've got a freebie seeker, this is the patient who suddenly becomes your bestie and they're angling to get that extra Botox touch up or the complimentary product. They're guilt tripping the front desk and dropping lines like, I've spent so much money here or my friend got this treatment done for free and they're trying to twist your policies in their favor. The solution here, peeps, is fucking policies. You got to have them. You got to have clear policies in place for your touch ups, for your redos, and what is considered complimentary. Once those policies are set, your team needs to stick to that shit like glue. Something you could say would be like, I completely understand that you want the best results possible, and we are committed to making sure that you are happy. However, touch ups are only included if necessary within, you know, X time frame after the initial treatment. And since we're past that window, the cost for an additional treatment would be. X, whatever that is. You want to be polite and firm. You're not running a charity. You are running a business. And once that patient realizes that they can't manipulate you, they're either going to respect your boundaries or they're going to move on and try their luck elsewhere. So again, polite and firm. I like to treat patients just like I like to treat staff. And that is with an iron fist in a velvet glove. So let's move on to the overly needy patient, okay? This one's tricky because on the surface, this patient seems just like they're high maintenance. But before you know it, they're monopolizing your time with endless questions, expecting extra services, creating chaos in your schedule, running you behind. They expect priority treatment without respecting your time or your boundaries. You need to set clear expectations from the start. And you need to know and identify these patients for being a little high maintenance in your consultations. So if you have not done the kick-ass consult training with me or a retail rock star workshop, I highly recommend that you book a discovery call and we do that because I need to train your team to the tits on being able to deliver a kick-ass consult and be able to read people when they're coming in for procedures with you. Okay, so let's do that. Honestly, I'm, I'm training your competition. So come on, let's do this. All right, so the solution here is you want to set expectations from the start, okay? Don't be afraid to enforce boundaries when necessary. If they want more time and more services, they can bloody well pay for it. You could say something like, I'm happy to answer any questions that we have during your scheduled appointments. If you'd like to discuss additional concerns, we can schedule a longer consultation or additional treatment sessions for the additional fee of blah, 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 okay? Let's talk about when you need to fire a patient, when it's time to say goodbye. So let's be real. There are times when a patient is just not worth the fucking headache. Let's be honest. If they're costing you more stress, more time, more refunds, they're bringing in less revenue than you are giving out in time and refunds. So it's time to let them go. Firing a patient can always feel awkward, but trust me, it is one of the most empowering things that you can do for your business. It's very much like firing staff. It's awkward, but it's also empowering if that person needs to go. So how do you fire a patient? You do it with grace and professionalism and clarity. So how you might frame that is going to look something like, thank you for being a valued patient at our clinic. After careful consideration, uh, we feel that our clinic may not be the best fit for your needs moving forward. We'd be happy to recommend you to another provider that might suit what you're looking for in a better fashion. Here is a $100 gift card to 123 Med Spa down the road. And what you want to do is if you're going to fire a patient, give them a fucking gift card to your competitor. Because trust me, they're still going to be a headache, but they just won't be your headache anymore. And then you still look classy, but you send them packing. Really, that's it. There's no need to get into a long discussion, defend your reasons, keep it short, keep it professional, stand your ground. And don't worry about reputation management then because you've done it correctly and you've left that situation classy as hell and the patient can't walk away causing too much drama because you were freaking fabulous. Let's talk about reputation. It's a big one. So I know some of you are thinking, but Lise, what if they go on Yelp? What if they go on Google? What if they trash my business? Look, you're always going to be at risk of that. 
But in reality, if you handled a situation professionally without drama, the likelihood of them going on a public tirade is way lower. So if they leave you a bad review, you respond, you are polite, you're professional. You know, we're sorry to hear that you didn't have a great experience. We strive to provide the best care possible and take feedback seriously. If you'd like to discuss this further, feel free to reach out and contact our office directly. And if you do need to talk to them about it, you can. If they leave a bad review, you also have to be careful because you have to, sometimes if they've outed themselves that they are a patient at your practice, then you can say, we did everything in our power to make it a great experience as far as getting you a gift certificate to another clinic. Like I would put that in all honesty, like stick it up your ass and beat it with your bad review. Okay. So then boom, you've handled it with class and everyone reading that review will see that you've tried to do your part. And let's be real. People can smell a crazy person's bad review from a mile away. So the biggest thing and our final thoughts here is just don't let your patients play you. So these are going to be the exceptions to the rule. You're going to have a lot of amazing patients and you're going to have hopefully very few of these. At the end of the day, your med spa is a business. It's not a playground for manipulative patients trying to get a bunch of free shit from you and piss off and drain your team. You deserve respect. You deserve your policies to be upheld. Your staff deserves to work in an environment free from bullshit. So keep your boundaries strong, set clear expectations from the start, and don't be afraid to fire a patient who is more trouble than they're worth. Whoo, guys, I'm a dehydrated bitch after that rant. So anyways, I, I just want to share with you, I love you so much. I'm so grateful that you tune in. I'm so grateful that you share this podcast with your friends and your colleagues and your staff. And I love all the direct messages and the text messages of how much the content on here is helping you. And I, I really know that so many of you want more than, than what's on this podcast. And so I want you to know that I have some exciting news. You've been asking and I, I promise you, I promise you I've been listening. So the after hours club bachacho party is coming. I am launching a membership for my VIP badass bachachos for club bachacho for those that want more of the good stuff. So different things like exclusive content, early access to episodes, um, some Q and A's, uh, ad free episodes, bonus episodes, so much more to come. I am so excited to launch this. So stay tuned for more of these details on this membership for Club Bachacho. It is going to be everything I am telling you. If you want to be the first to know when it drops, I want you to keep your eye on my social media on Instagram. It's at the bitch and beautician, which is T H E B I T C H N. B-E-A-U-T-I-C-I-A-N and the Scalpel of Truth podcast, which is the uh, Instagram handle there is Scalpel of Truth podcast. So as always, I have enjoyed sharing this info with you. I appreciate you. I love you so much and just want the best for your success and your profitability. So until next time, I want you to keep slaying Stay focused, stay sharp, stay fabulous, and keep those boundaries with your patients strong. Remember, you're a badass. You're a total fucking baddie. This is the Bitch and Petition signing off. Can't wait to see you next time and cannot wait for you to be part of Club Bichacho. Uh, don't away, just see things stay the way they are.